That was a good one, huh? I always wanted to be a chiropractor. Just kind of like the sounds of the cracking bones and everything. It's like, oh, man, the pops and everything like that. Okay, we're going over the quiz. Sorry, I forgot to start the video here. All right, so we got one dendrites. Good work. Okay, two. What do we have here, Campbell? Uh, soma. The soma. Good job. The cell body. All right, good job. All right, three. What do we have, Booker? The axon terminals. Good job. So the axon terminals branch out and reach out to other neurons. Good. Four. What do we have, Sarah? Myelin sheath. The myelin sheath. Good, good, good. Everybody got that. <laughs> Every year I do it, I think, oh, I don't know if it's the axon or myelin sheath. I'm like, oh, come on. Come on. I feel like I have it labeled okay for the, for the chart. Five. What do we have, Hannah? The nucleus. Good job. Six. Campbell, the axon, good work, good work there. Yep, the long cord, the one-way highway, good job, the axon. All right, so the questions here, the microscopic spaces between the myelin sheath that cover the axon. These spaces are important because they keep the action potential going through the long axon. What do we have here, Booker? Yep, the nodes are Ranvier, good, good job. All right, protects the axon and the electrical signal that is carrying much like the orange plastic coating does on electrical cord. What do you have here, Sarah? Myelin sheath. You love the myelin sheath today, I guess. Single larger transmitter fiber that extends from the soma. What do you got, Hannah? The axon. Good job. Axon sounds like a cool name. Axon Mobile. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> axon. All right, central part of the neuron that contains the nucleus. Campbell, you love this one again. Yeah, the cell body, the, yeah, cell body is soma. Jeez, it's the second time answering that. Receiver part of the neuron, which accepts most of the incoming messages. Booker, dendrites, good. This is the initial movement of energy from the soma to the axon. Sarah? Absolute yeah, absolute threshold. That's triggered. Good job. I know, yeah, if depolarization was on there, it could have been like a trick question there, but right when that first is initiated. This is a period after action potential, also known as a recharging period. Hannah? Refractory period. Yeah, refractory period. Good job. Just like those old cameras, right? Got to charge up and wind up that out, the, the album in there to make sure that's ready to go. The film, sorry. All right, once action potential is released, there's no going back. What do we have? Campbell? All or nothing. All or nothing principle. Yep. Good job. It's like saying a word. Once you say a word, you can't really get it back. Everybody heard it. So make sure you think about what you're saying. Or just like shooting a gun. Once that trigger's pulled, it's really no going back. That's going to be fired. Hopefully you hit the deer, right? Hopefully you hit the deer. All right. This is the phrase of the neuron when it's waiting to be fired. Booker? Resting potential. Good job. Let me see if I'm filming. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> This is the phase when the signal is being sent down the axon to the axon terminals. Sarah? Action potential. Good job. Good job. This is also referred to as the gap between neurons where information is sent to another neuron. Go ahead, uh, Hannah. Synapse. Synapse. Yep. When neurons connect, these chemicals are released, which also communicate, or it's also communication between two neurons. Camel? Neurotransmitters. Good job. So neurotransmitters that are not absorbed by the connecting dendrite or reabsorbed by the sending neuron is called, or in a process called, Booker, reuptake. Good job. All right. Is there any questions on that? You guys good with it? All right. The neuron's pretty easy. So we'll, we'll move on from there. It might pop up on a test or exam again. So just to let you know, so make sure uh, you, you, you retain that information. Okay, bell ringer for today. Bell ringer. All Describe the process on how neurons connect with one another and send information. There we go. How about that? There you go.
I had to pin my flags up against the wall over there. Since the motion sensor would be triggered when we're not here in the air, like kind of pushes, the flags would move and the lights would be on. Every morning I come in at five, around 545 to work out before school. And I look down the hallway, my lights are the only ones on. It's like, oops, my bad, my bad. How's track going, Sarah? Is it? Or is that uh you're not enjoying it? Uh -oh. Well what practice is or what? Practices are fun. It's like organized all right. It's like it's pretty tedious because we have to run with a mask on. Oh. And like we show up in the first literally the first forty five minutes just trying to we're waiting for the coaches to show up and they're always late. So I'm waiting until fifteen minutes before coach even shows up and then you have the temperature gun they bring in. And they try to take our temperatures. And it so it's like an hour before you get going. Yeah, and then we we each have to get our temperature scan to hide our name and if we have any COVID symptoms. And there's so many of us. Like yesterday, it was too cold, so they had us stand in a line and rub our foreheads before they took our temperature because the gun wasn't reading right. Wow. We ran your warm up, and then we'll try. So then we ran our two lap warm up. It takes forever to do stretching and stuff. It's like so boring. So much wasted. Mm -hmm. And then, not that I particularly like running hill repeats or intervals in the first place. Yeah. That. So it's kind of, and we were told that even in meets, we have to wear masks. Like, no, I'm not wearing a mask over my nose while I'm running two miles. That's just not. Oh, happening. that'd be terrible. Like, I'm not anti mask, but there's no way you can expect someone to run suck cloth. <laughs> suck cloth. It's like, it's not feasible because <laughs> when you're sucking in, like, the pinnacle of learning how to be a good runner is learning to control Breathe, your breathing. Yeah, yeah. Like once you learn to control your breathing, you're pretty much good as far as being a runner goes. And you can't control your breathing patterns when there's cloth sucking against your nose. Yeah, like, really. When we go on towel runs, we have to wear a mask. When we do intervals, we have to wear a mask. And like we've gotten yelled at before we haven't. Like Lily Boyer and I just called them last time. Because you can't run with a mask over your nose. You can't. I know people when I walk into a grocery store are like dramatic, like I can't breathe in this thing. <laughs> no, when you're running, you like actually can't. Yeah. You're sucking it fast to your nostrils. You can't really breathe. Especially outside. Oh man, because I'm on the treadmill. I'm running with it on. This is unreal. Yeah. Couldn't imagine going two miles with that. The wide treadmill. I just, it's not that I'm like trying to be like rebellious. It's that I just Defiant. like when you are running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sometimes I pull mine down. <laughs> I had to cover up the recording here. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. What do we got here? Describe the process on how neurons connect with one another and send information. All right, so we talked about this on what Friday? Yep, right before the quiz. So, what do we have here? How does this process work? So, within your response, I guess you should have detailed a little bit about the neuron and you know, how this all works, but what do we got? What do we got here? Who wants to describe this? Who wants to describe this? Cam, what do you have? Um, well, pretty much like whatever the message is turns into a chemical message, and you can determine whether it's the magnet goes from the axon of one across to the axon of the other. That's great. Yeah, um, good, good job. So, when action potential is occurring, right, that information is being sent down the axon to the axon terminals, it's going to reach the end of the axon terminal eventually, right? And it's going to be sent through these neural transmitters, right? These, um, what are they called? Uh, oh, synaptic vesicles, right? So these vesicles are holding these neural transmitters. And once it reaches the presynaptic membrane, okay, which is right at the end of the axon terminals, it's going to almost burst. And uh, what is that gap between the neurons, between the axon terminal and between the dendrite of a receiving neuron? What is that gap called? What is that called? Sarah, do you know? Synapse. Yeah, synapse. Good job. Good job. And then that area they describe even closer as a synaptic cleft, right? And uh, as these neurotransmitters are floating out into the synapse, okay, the synaptic cleft, 
It either can be received by the uh, this uh, postsynaptic membrane of the other dendrite, or this information is going to be received as a locking key. It needs that particular that I that identified um, receptor from the dendrite of the receiving neuron in order to be received. And if it's not received, what happens? There's two different things that it could occur. One of them was labeled on the quiz. The other one I didn't have on there. But let's say it was just you know, released and it was not sent back to the presynaptic membrane. What's that? What's that term called? Or it's just kind of floating about. Neurotransmitters are not accepting. The neurotransmitters don't go back up into the presynaptic uh, membrane. What's that called? Sarah, do you remember? Diffusion, good job. And what if it's accepted back in? What's that called? Reuptake, good job. Is there any questions on that, guys? So they actually connect the dendrites and the axon terminals. Are they actually touching? No. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. All right. All right. So moving on here today. Moving on. Where are we at? Vocab. You guys good with vocab? Is everybody finished? All right. So I didn't really want to spend too much time on that anymore. Um, I will, how about we have the vocab due Thursday? Does that work? Okay. I won't be here Friday. So the current event, Eden will have hers turned in Thursday so I can show it in class at the start of the day or start of the period and we'll move on from there. All right. Um, how about I hope, how about you guys open your books up? Well, go to the PDF online. It's just a short, short reading. Okay. We'll go a little bit more in detail with the presentation, but it's called the three brains on 160. The three brains on 160. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the hind brain today. The hind brain. So you go to classwork, down to general information, and then we'll go to PDF right here. Yep, yep. I don't know what page it is on the PDF, but it's 160 on the in the actual PDF here, the book. I went way too far there. Oh, 172. Look at that. Right to it. I always feel so accomplished when I do that. Open a book up right to the page. It's like, oh, how cool is that? All right, so the three brains. Just read this section here, the hind brain. All right, and then stop when you get to the midbrain. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. Okay, here we go. All right, that shouldn't take you too, too long to do, so we'll move on here. Where at, where at, where at? There's, there it is. Not it. There it is. <clears throat> All right, so we're getting into the brain here. So here's just some quick facts about the brain before we get to the hind brain. Okay, the brain stem. All right, so I think these facts are pretty interesting. <clears throat> I was going to have you read them over, but just to save time and to get you working on the activity so you don't have any homework, I'll just roll through it real quick. So uh, with that, what is it? You could join two eight studded Lego bricks 24 ways and six bricks nearly 103 million ways. That's pretty amazing, actually. Think about it. You guys like Legos? Yeah. Sarah, you don't like Legos? I was like, four. Oh my gosh, I still collect them and get them to go. 
And then, when I find a Lego now, I'm stepping on it on accident. <laughs> oh, yeah. They do suck when you step on them, don't they? Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. When I was in my toy room when I was little, I'd always have Legos spread out. My dad would walk in. Ah, clean us up. Let's go. That was the thing with toys. If I ever had them laying around, he would throw them away. I'm like, what do you mean you throw them away? Because that's – make you learn. You make you learn. You have them laying around and throw it out. It's like, oh, my gosh. Here goes my Batman toy. Favorite one. Gone forever. I tell you a story about my blanket, the Easter bunny. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. I knew I said that one in here. All right. So with so 100 billion neurons, each having roughly 10,000 contacts with other neurons, so synapses, right? We end up with around 1,000 trillion synapses. That's crazy. Amazing, right? And these people that obviously have more understanding concepts, different types of tasks and abilities, there might be a little bit more. So a grain of sand size spec of your brain contains 100,000 neurons and 1 billion synapses. That's pretty crazy to think about. So how microscopic and small that really is. And the fact that we can even see it. Right? There's some actual videos of neurons connecting and forming synapses together, and it's pretty crazy to think about okay, how, how we can see that small. And still in 2021, right? 2021, I still lose service on the phone. How does that happen? Right? I think of all the amazing things we accomplish as humans, and I just I lose contact and, and phone call every now and then. I get a drop call. It's like, how is this even possible? Right? How is it even possible? All right. <clears throat> forget oh yeah yeah we'll watch it some other time usually I like showing that it's pretty interesting here so the neurons cluster into groups called neural networks the neurons work close by ensure short fast connections learning occurs as feedback strengthens strengthens connection the neurons that fire together are wire together so this is really just what we talked about with many of these neurons how they connect with one another and how when we perform a task or practice it over and over and over again, we form these neural networks, connections. And that neural connection comes stronger, thicker, okay, as we perform these tasks more and more. It's like we can just perform it without even thinking. I'm sure we can all, we all have that itch, we all have that uh, skill where we can just do right like that. You can do it blindfolded. You can do it without even seeing. Okay, and that's that's something that's pretty amazing that our minds can do and how these neural connections occur. These glial cells coming together and forming alongside these axons and these synapses to, to allow for neural connection to occur even faster and, and, and to can connect more neurons together for us to understand new concepts and experiences and, and create more skills right, and abilities for us. It's pretty amazing. All right, so with the brain, okay, we're going to talk about the brain stem today. Uh, we're going to get into the limbic system tomorrow, all right, and we'll talk about the cerebral cortex on Thursday. Yes, Thursday. And I have an activity for you Friday. Like that, too. Maybe it's just a video. So how about we do that? You can just bring your headset with you. And I can just uh, play that video for you. You can watch it because it's pretty cool. You guys ever see the movie Rain Man? No? You guys ever hear about it? No? Oh, okay. Well, it's just about this person. He's he's a real person. Right? The movie's made after him, Rain Man. And uh, this person can visualize and understand information. Like read a, read, He reads two pages at once when he reads. And he goes through books, like 800-page books within – several minutes like he flashes through them so quick so i open up the book like let's say like this one eye would focus in the left hand corner and the other eye will focus in the right hand corner and he'll read it by just coming towards the middle and he'll understand they said like 98 percent of the information just like and he'll just like look at visualize it visualize it visualize it i'll just flip the page but uh i can't move as fast as he can i guess but uh yeah he has more neural connections there, so he can flip the pages quicker without ripping it than I can, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's amazing what he can do. And he can remember dates. He can remember you know, significant people, when they were born, what day it was, what, what the weather was like. It's interesting. It's pretty crazy. And they give some other examples of some people that have these amazing abilities with their brains. And 
Uh, one was with artwork. Okay, there's a there's a person who was a younger child. He has a, he has autism, and he's just amazing with what he can create artistically. Like he just like color, he just draws things in the sand, and it's just this masterpiece, really, in the sand, and the and the waves come and just wash it away. Like he just creates it that fast. You're like, oh my gosh, say that! Like that's amazing, and the waves just take it away. He's like, eh, just start again. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. So I'll I'll post that Friday for you when I'm out, I guess. All right, and then like I said, oh yeah, limbic system, cerebral cortex. It's real quick. The brain stem, okay, the hind brain. This connects the nervous system up into the brain, up into the limbic system. As a way, you can just kind of visualize it as a stalk, right? It's like a stalk that peers and attaches to our nervous system that branches up into our brain. And all the basic organisms have the brain stem. And we all know since you know, with evolution and how uh, we evolved over time, we have a, a larger brain with more functions and parts that allows us to have memories, have emotions, uh, have the ability to plan and schedule events out, you name it. Okay, uh, you know, doing different types of reasoning and critical thinking and rational thinking. So our minds, yeah, have evolved over time. So like with alligators, which I'll show a funny clip today, which I think you'll enjoy. Uh, they, they, have a, they have a brain stem, but uh, it's really not as it's really not as in depth as what we have as a you know, cerebral cortex and a limbic system that branches off of this system here as the hind brain. Okay, but we're going to go through different types of parts and functions that I'd like you to really know. And uh, we'll even get to the cerebellum today because that's still considered with the with the brain stem, the hind brain. <clears throat> All right, so the brain stem is a crossover point where most nerves to and from each side of the brain connect with the body's opposite side. So we'll talk about that more in detail uh, probably next week, how each hemisphere um, deals with different types of feelings and, and uh, interaction and responses from the other side of your body. It's amazing how that works. It's like a crossover section, a crossover point, okay, where our brain stems located, how we feel certain things. That's why if there's ever a person that has maybe a seizure, okay, or maybe goes through a coma, right, okay, if they are impacted depending on where they're at, right? Uh, their left side of their brain could be affected, which will result in maybe a, a disability to the right side of your body. It's interesting how that works. And we'll talk about split brain procedure and how to maybe alleviate from epilepsy, you know, severe seizures, and, uh, you know, how that may cause some issues with people as they're trying to connect different types of pictures and how they verbally say it. it's amazing how that works and we'll talk about that, about that more in detail more next week all right so moving on here first part here the medulla this is part of the video i was going to show later the funny one from the water boy you guys ever see the water boy yeah okay if you haven't check it out it's hilarious all right so medulla is bulge low in the brain stem it regulates basic body functions including breathing blood pressure and heart rate so involuntary uh, Functions, involuntary functions. We don't have to think about it. It just happens. It just occurs. And also, uh, uh, you know, with vomiting, right? Oh, my gosh, vomiting. And this this kind of happens through the medulla and controlled by that. And, and, uh, sneezing as well, right? These are reflexes, things that occur without us even thinking. It just happens. You kind of feel it coming out of nowhere. I know if, well, if I eat something too fast, uh oh, here it comes. Come back up. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But the medulla operates on autopilot without our conscious awareness, like most of our brain stem. It just occurs. So when you think about the hind brain, when you think about the brain stem, a lot of these functions occur without us even thinking. So they're involuntary functions, right? And this obviously breaches, all right? This, this bridges up into our limbic system, which we'll talk more in detail about more tomorrow. You know what? Maybe I could have the quiz Friday, and I'll just show the the quiz on the brain Friday, and then I'll just show the video on Monday. How does that work? No, we're off Monday, Tuesday. Then. Does that work for everybody? Just like a little, oh, yeah, we're back from the weekend. Here's a video. Cool. All right, we'll do that. We'll do that. All right, so that's the medulla there. <clears throat> that's the medulla. So like I mentioned, um, some involuntary actions that occur, sneezing, coughing, vomiting, if you want to write that down too as well. Those are some different types of functions that occur and, and uh, you know, w w with the medulla. 
Right. And like I mentioned too, with cardiovascular respiratory systems, and this is that that bridge connecting connecting the spinal cord, okay, to the brain stem. All right, next one, pons, which literally means bridge. Okay, that's what it means, bridge. Right, pons means bridge in Latin. All right, so the pons, right up here, it is bulge, right in the brain stem. It's a bulge. You know, it kind of looks like a what an Adam's apple. Right? You're looking at seven stroke or something. So this is a bulge that sits right above the medulla. And the pons helps relay signals to the cerebellum and deal with movement, as well as sleep, respiration, swallowing, bladder control, hearing, equilibrium, taste, eye movement, facial expressions, and facial sensation and posture. So a lot of the facial movements occur in the pons, okay? And uh, it also helps with bladder control, hearing, equilibrium. Uh, but many of the functions, many of the different types of movements, um, even um, – and salivating, even uh, tear production occurs with the pons. So if you think about all the things that, you know, what the movements our face makes, and uh, like I said, of crying with tear production, and uh, even salivating when oh, we, we see some tasty food, or when it's getting closer to lunchtime, this is all controlled by the pons. And again, a lot of these things are involuntary. Yeah, we can move our eyes when we want to as a voluntary movement. Yeah, we can we can uh, <clears throat> we can move our face every now and then if we want to smile, frown, whatever. But for the most part, these movements can happen involuntary. That's controlled by the pawns. So, like I said, it really works hand in hand with the cerebellum, which we'll talk more uh, in a little bit about towards the end of this lesson uh, with balance coordination. All right, is everybody good with the pawns? So just remember it as the bridge. This is this bulge right here, right in the brain stem, okay? The medulla, like we know, is that first intersection point from the spinal cord moving up into the brain stem, okay? And the pawns is this bulge. Looks like an Adam's apple. It's kind of, uh, so reticular formation, all right? Reticular formation looks like this pencil-like structure here, okay? This blue pencil-like structure. It stems up from um, the uh, spinal cord as well and works up into the brain stem and the reticular formation It really just keeps the brain awake and alert And it just monitors incoming sensory information So keeping the brain awake and alert So when we're consciously at it keeping our brain functioning ready to react to certain things, stimulus, and being able to respond to sensory information that occurs here with the reticular formation. Oh, I got worried there. So it looks like I said a bundle of, uh, you know, it looks like a pencil shape here, right in the brain stem, stems up from the spinal cord, keeps the brain awake and alert, alert ready to go. Really just monitor sensory information coming in. Cool. You guys good with that? All right. The thalamus. Okay. I promise just this slide and another one. That's it. The thalamus. Okay. Right up here at the top of the brain stem. Okay. It even has some sort of relationship as well with the limbic system, which we'll talk about. So the brainstem stems up, right, from the spinal cord. Okay, we'll talk about tomorrow the limbic system, kind of like a bladder, the uh, bladder that folds around this brainstem, okay? okay? So the thalamus is the central processing chip. That's, that, that's what they call it, the central processing chip that uh, directs incoming and outgoing sensory and motor traffic. So any information coming up from the uh, the uh, <clears throat> the nervous system, the thalamus you know, captures this information and sends it off to which location in the brain it needs to go. So if it is something with memory or something with experience or taste, sensation, whatever it might be, probably send it up to the limbic system, up into our sensory cortex. Right? If it's something with vision or 
or we're visualizing some things, all right? It might be connecting that information to our occipital lobe, or whatever it might be, okay? Uh, you know, something with movements, our motor cortex. So the thalamus is that central processing chip, gathering up all that information, sensory information that we're, and we're requiring and, and, and making sure it's being sent to our location within the brain where it can be processed, okay, where we can experience it a little bit more. Brain or cerebral cortex, wherever part, whatever lobe it might be, okay, to the rest of our body for movements, for reflexes. So the thalamus has a very important uh, <coughs> function within our brain stem. All right, and that's located right at the top. Like I mentioned, the brain stem, okay, it's like that stalk here, and the limbic system kind of folds over top of it. The thalamus is right at the top of the brain stem where it's connected mostly with experience, memories, okay, and even some sort of sensa sensation as well. Uh, you know, we'll see and talk about that more tomorrow. All right, cool. Well, last one here, cerebellum. Cerebellum. They call this the little brain. Right, the little brain. It's just really branched off that brain stem. Okay, it's right in the back of your, your skull. Right, right at the lower part back of your skull. Okay. You get punched back there. Look out. <laughs> look out. That's why they, then it's illegal in boxing to, you know, punch someone in the back of the head. Rabbit punch is what they call it there. Punch someone in the back of the head because it really just is a function for coordination and balance. Okay, that's one of its main functions. So if you want to write that down, that's most important. So with uh, with balance and coordination. But they call it the little brain because it literally looks like a small brain in the back of, uh, you know, right on top of the brain stem and underneath the occipital lobe. And it does help with some sort of learning, okay, and judges time and regulates some emotions. But for the most part, it's with coordination and balance. That's the main thing I'd like you to know. And when you're 21, you're out and about having a good time. This is part of the brain that is affected, for the most part, in your brain with coordination and balance. On drug, do they bring those goggles in? Do they bring those goggles in that you wear that kind of like visualizes as you're drunk or something like that? No? Don't they do that? Oh, in elementary school? No. They used to do that at my school. It was for like, oh, just walk a straight line. It was pretty hard, difficult to do. But obviously with alcohol, okay, that's and cerebellum's affected with that, with balance, coordination, how we can walk that straight line and okay, perform our tasks that we need to do. Perform. All right, is there any questions on the brain stem, the hind brain? You guys good with that? So its basic functions really is involuntary movements, okay? And it also is uh, you know, just a relay center from our nervous system to our brain. Okay, this is, uh, this is something that really all organisms have. This is the basic part of the brain, okay? And uh, this is really the bridge from information okay, to our brain. All right, is there any questions at all? You guys good? All right. So I'll just show the video of the water boy. I think you'll really like that and enjoy it. And then I'll let you guys work on the activity here. The activity won't take you too long, I promise. Okay, actually, let me show that. Let me, let me walk through this assignment real quick with you. So it's just, I, I did it as a picture. You're just supposed to label the brain stem, okay, and just describe its functions, its, you know, what, what it performs, okay? That's all I want you to do. So just label it. If you want to, you can put the number there. But if you want to spell it out, label it out, that's great, too. That's fine. Okay. All right. So we'll watch this video now. 